Hey Laura, it's Tuesday. And where should I start? Okay, about Hank's books. I read an absolutely remarkable thing and I'm almost done with reading A Beautifully Foolish Endeavor. So feel free to talk about them in your next video if you want to. Um, I should be done by Thursday, I guess. Okay, about Star Wars and your last video. I'm so glad you liked this one so much more than uh, A New Hope because I was actually kind of scared that you would stop watching them all together after the first one. So yeah, I'm really glad that you continued watching them. I don't know if you already googled the answers to the question you had or if somebody else explained it to you, but in case no one did, here are my explanations. To be completely honest, it's been a while since I watched The Empire Strikes Back, so I really hope that my explanations aren't completely wrong. Okay, let's start with the scene where Han Solo rescues Luke on Hoth, you know, the ice planet. I mean, this animal died like a second ago, so I'm sure it is still pretty warm and it gives shelter, so um, I think it does make sense that Han, like, puts Luke in it. <laughs> but because I was curious myself how long it would keep Luke warm, I um, looked it up on the internet and obviously because it is Star Wars, someone had already answered this question. So if you want to know, if you're interested, uh, you can pause this video and read it. God, I love the internet. Okay, and about Luke going to rescue Han and Leia. Yoda knows that Luke will be flying right into a trap if he goes. But besides that, I think Yoda and Obi-Wan are so afraid of Luke leaving because they already know that Darth Vader is his father and they fear that he won't be able to control his emotions if he finds out about it, and that this anger and confusion about finding out would make it much easier um, to like, convince him to join the dark side, if you know what I mean. Of course, they underestimate Luke, and none of that happens, but they had no way of knowing that. Actually, I think this will make much more sense to you after watching the next trilogy. But yeah, anyways, that's just how I remember it. So, I mean, I could be wrong. Okay, but let's carry on. So this week I decided to solve another one of our problems. I'm sure you remember that we talked about finding a Marvel character that we could tell people is our favorite, but it's so weird and unknown that people would be really confused. Well, I remember this a couple of days ago and I couldn't remember us coming to any kind of conclusion. So, of course, I started to read some articles on the internet about this. I mean, I always knew that there are a lot of Marvel characters, but I had no idea how many there are. I found some promising ones, but I think that our new favorite character should be Dupe. Uh, I have to be completely honest, I haven't read that much about him yet, but I went to his wiki page and found some really interesting things about him. Information about Dupe's origins, as with anything else about him, is difficult to verify. Okay. But I read his article and I decided that to win you over, I should give you a few facts about Dupe. He's described as a thief, lazy and useless. I mean, that's kind of relatable. Allegedly, he had a role in the fall of communism in the Eastern Bloc. Dupe joined the Mutant Team X-Force as their official videographer, and he participated in a roller derby tournament with She-Hulk and Tigra and cried during it. I think, I don't know, I just think that he kind of seems like a fun character. I, maybe I should read 
a bit more about him and I'll keep you updated on that. And if we decide that he really is our new favorite character, then we have a favorite book, a favorite Marvel character, a favorite band, if you remember what I mean. Um, so maybe we should settle on our favorite movie next. So if you have any suggestions for that, just uh, let me know. <laughs> But yeah, I guess that's it for today's video and I'll see you on Thursday. Bye!